Excerpt from The Tragic Sense of Life by Miguel de Unamuno, 1864-1936. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. From Chapter 1 The Man of Flesh and Bone Singular judgments have the value of universal judgments, the logicians say. The singular is not particular, it is universal. Man is an end, not a means. All civilization addresses itself to man, to each man, to each eye. What is that idol, call it humanity or call it what you like, to which all men and each individual must be sacrificed? For I sacrifice myself for my neighbors, for my fellow countrymen, for my children. And these sacrifice themselves in their turn for theirs, and theirs again for those that come after them, and so on in a never-ending series of generations. And who receives the fruit of this sacrifice? Those who talk to us about this fantastic sacrifice, this dedication without an object, I want to talk to us also about the right to live. What is this right to live? They tell me I am here to realize I know not what social end, but I feel that I, like each one of my fellows, am here to realize myself, to live. Yes, yes, I see it all. An enormous social activity, a mighty civilization, a profuseness of science, of art, of industry, of morality. And afterwards, when we have filled the world with industrial marvels, with great factories, with roads, museums, and libraries, we shall fall exhausted at the foot of it all, and it will subsist. For whom? Was man made for science, or was science made for man? Why, the reader will exclaim again, we are coming back to what the Catechism says. Question. For whom did God create the world? Answer. For man. Well, why not? So ought the man who is a man to reply. The ant, if it took account of these matters and were a person, would reply. For the ant. And it would reply rightly. The world is made for consciousness. For each consciousness. A human soul is worth all the universe, someone, I know not whom, has said and said magnificently. A human soul, mind you, not a human life, not this life. And it happens that the less a man believes in the soul, that is to say, in this conscious immortality, personal and concrete, the more he will exaggerate the worth of this poor transitory life. This is a source from which springs all that effeminate sentimental ebullition against war. True, a man ought not to wish to die, but the death to be renounced is the death of the soul. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, says the gospel, but it does not say whosoever will save his soul, the immortal soul, or, at any rate, which we believe and wish to be immortal. And what all the objectivists do not see, or rather do not wish to see, is that when a man affirms his I, his personal consciousness, he affirms man, man concrete and real, affirms the true humanism, the humanism of man, not of the things of man. And in affirming man, he affirms consciousness, for the only consciousness of which we have consciousness is that of man. The world is for consciousness, or rather this for, this notion of finality, and feeling rather than notion, this teleological feeling is born only where there is consciousness. Consciousness and finality are fundamentally the same thing. If the sun possessed consciousness, it would think, no doubt, that it lived in order to give light to the worlds but it would also and above all think that the worlds existed in order that it might give them light and enjoy itself in giving them light, and so live. And it would think well. And all this tragic fight of man to save himself, 
this immortal craving for immortality which caused the man kant to make that immortal leap of which i have spoken all this is simply a fight for consciousness if consciousness is as some inhuman thinker has said nothing more than a flash of light between two externities of darkness then there is nothing more execrable than existence some may espy a fundamental contradiction in everything that i am saying now expressing a longing for unending life now affirming that this earthly life does not possess the value that is given to it contradiction to be sure the contradiction of my heart says yes and of my head that says no of course there is contradiction who does not recollect those words of the gospel lord i believe help thou my unbelief contradiction of course since we only live in and by contradictions since life is tragedy and the tragedy is perpetual struggle without victory or the hope of victory life is contradiction the values we are discussing are as you see values of the heart and against values of the heart reasons do not avail for reasons are only reasons that is to say they are not even truths there is a class of pedantic label mongers pedants by nature and by grace who remind me of that man who proposing to console a father whose son had suddenly died in the flower of his years says to him patience my friend we all must die would you think it strange if this father were offended at such an impertinence for it is an impertinence there are times when even an axiom can become an impertinence how many times may it not be said para pensar qual tu solo es preciso no tener nada más que inteligencia footnote to be lacking in everything but intelligence is a necessary qualification for thinking like you and footnote there are in fact people who appear to think only with the brain or with whatever may be the specific thinking organ while others think with all the body and all the soul with the blood with the marrow of the bones with the heart with the lungs with the belly with the life and the people who think only with the brain develop into definition mongers they become the professionals of thought and you know what the professional is you know what a product of the differentiation of labor is take a professional boxer he has learned to hit with such economy of effort that while concentrating all his strength in the blow he only brings into play just those muscles that are required for the immediate and definite object of his action to knock out his opponent a blow given by a non-professional will not have so much immediate objective efficiency but it will more greatly vitalize the striker causing him to bring into play almost the whole of his body the one is the blow of a boxer the other that of a man and it is notorious that the hercules of the circus the athletes of the ring are not as a rule healthy they knock out their opponents they lift enormous weights but they die of thesis or dyspepsia if a philosopher is not a man he is anything but a philosopher he is above all a pedant and a pedant is a caricature of a man the cultivation of any branch of science of chemistry of physics of geometry of philology may be a work of differentiated specialization and even so only within very narrow limits and restrictions but philosophy like poetry is the work of integration and synthesis or else it is merely pseudo-philosophical erudition all knowledge has an ultimate object knowledge for the sake of knowledge is say what you will nothing but a dismal begging of the question we learn something either for an immediate practical end or in order to complete the rest of our knowledge even the knowledge that appears to us to be most theoretical that is to say of least immediate application to the non-intellectual necessities of life 
answers to a necessity which is no less real because it is intellectual to a reason of economy in thinking to a principle of unity and continuity of consciousness but just as a scientific fact has its finality in the rest of knowledge so the philosophy that we would make our own has also its extrinsic object it refers to our whole destiny to our attitude in face of life and the universe and the most tragic problem of philosophy is to reconcile intellectual necessities with the necessities of the heart and the will for it is on this rock that every philosophy that pretends to resolve the eternal and tragic contradiction the basis of our existence breaks to pieces but do all men face this contradiction squarely end of excerpt from the tragic sense of life by miguel de unamuno eighteen sixty four to nineteen thirty six